morning guys, welcome back to another video here in our audio series in DaVinci Resolve. So today we are going to continue from where we left off in that last video, which if you haven't seen the first video about setting the levels of your audio clip, check out the card up here. You can click on that and it'll take you over to that video. So check that out. You want some good audio levels before we move into the next step, which is setting your EQ. So by working with the EQ here in DaVinci Resolve, you're really going to be able to shape your sound a little bit, make it clearer. You're going to be able to remove unwanted uh, noise or things that just don't sound good within the clip. There's a lot that you can do and EQ can really make a big difference on any one of your clips here. As we get going here, and I mentioned this in the other video too, you're going to want some good uh, headphones or speakers. It's going to make your job of hearing the nuances of the sound a little bit better and a little bit easier. So I'll leave a link to the headphones that I have here in the description below. Had these guys a long time. They work great and uh, they weren't too expensive. I mean, as far as headphones are concerned. So these guys are pretty good. So let's jump over into Resolve and start talking about some EQ. So here's our clip in DaVinci Resolve, and there's a few ways we can start to work with the EQ here. And the first way is when you're in the Edit tab, which is where we are right now, Edit tab right here. You can go ahead and select your clip, and you can come up to your inspector, open that up. Want to make sure you're on the Audio tab right here, and you can scroll down, and right here you have Clip Equalizer. So this is a very basic EQ. You have four different bands here, and sometimes I'll use this, but more often than not, I'm going to jump into the Fairlight page and I'm going to use the EQ for an entire track because I'm going to have, say, my clip of me talking and my vocals in the entire track. So I'm going to want that EQ to affect everything in the track, not just a particular clip. But if you wanted to adjust just one clip, you could do that right here in the edit page. But we're going to jump over into the Fairlight page. And if you're looking at this equalizer right here in the inspector, you might be a little unsure about what all this stuff means but I'm gonna explain it in the Fairlight tab just because the EQ is bigger and that's generally where I do all my work. So that's where we're gonna uh, explain all these different things and what they do. But you can apply the same principles to this smaller EQ over here in the Edit tab. So let's go ahead and jump over into the Fairlight tab and get going with some EQ here. Click on the musical notes there on the bottom if you're not sure how to get to the Fairlight tab. And here we are, we have our clip. We've got our level set already. Now we wanna open up our EQ. So where do you find your EQ? Well, you need to come up to the top here, click on Mixer. That's going to go ahead and open up your mixer. And right in your mixer, take a look at the track you want to adjust. And above where the faders are, you should see an area here called EQ. And that's going to be your equalizer. Now, if for some reason you don't see EQ, use your mouse wheel to scroll up and down here. And if that still doesn't work and you still can't find it, come on up to these three little dots right here, click on that, and make sure you have EQ turned on. And if you're still having trouble, turn off some of these other ones so that way you don't have to scroll around and try and find it. But make sure you've got that EQ turned on. And as long as it's turned on, this is what you should see here. And go ahead and just double click on your EQ and it's gonna bring up our EQ window. All right, so we are gonna go over the EQ window here. I'm gonna explain what everything does, how it works. I'm also gonna give you some ideas of ranges where say there's something that doesn't sound so good in your clip, you're not sure where to find it. I'm gonna give you an idea of where to look in the different frequency ranges. So the first tip I wanna give you is that generally you wanna cut your frequencies before you boost them. So you don't wanna go around and just boost everything up and make it sound what you think might be better. You actually wanna go find the parts that don't sound so good and drop down those frequencies. So let's start taking a look at the EQ tab here and try and take this clip and make it sound as best as we can. All right, so just going over the EQ window here real quick. We have, starting at the top left here, this says uh, equalizer, obviously, and this is your button to turn it on and off. So you can hear before and after changes pretty easily. So if you come over here, you have equalizer type, and if you click on the little drop down here, you notice you have earth, air, ice, and fire. So you may be thinking, what does that have to do with EQ, right? Well, that has to do with some mixing consoles and these different options emulate different mixing consoles. But the default here in DaVinci Resolve is Earth, and generally that's what I'm going to leave it at. So you can go ahead and leave yours at Earth too. Now up in the top right corner here, we have this little icon, which is a reset button. So if you make a bunch of changes, you don't like it, you want to reset your EQ, just go ahead and click that and it's going to reset everything for you. So if you look down in this next section here, this is our graphic equalizer, and this is where you're going to see the changes that you're making to your clip as far as what frequency and what does the change look like as far as how big is it, how much is the gain or reduction of it. So it gives you a good way to look at it quickly and kind of see what's going on with your clip as far as your changes are concerned. Moving all the way over to the right-hand side here, we have our gain. Now this is gonna be a post EQ gain because sometimes as you make adjustments to your EQ, you're gonna lose a little bit of that volume or gain. So you may need to add back a little bit of gain after you've adjusted your EQ. 
Kind of depends on the clip and the microphone and the changes that you make, whether you might need to do this or not. But the options there, if you lose a little bit of your signal as you do your EQ work, you may need to boost it up a little bit at the end. And you also have the option to attenuate it or bring it down a little bit if you need to. So coming down into the bottom section here, we have six different bands of equalization that we can use. And each one of these bands has some similar qualities to it. You can turn each one on and off by clicking on the name band one, band two, so on and so forth. So click on that. The next icon over here is what does your band look like? So for example, what we have selected now is this one right here, which is a high pass filter. And that simply means that everything below where we set this is gonna be taken out and all of the higher frequencies are gonna pass through so you can hear them. If we take another look at these, you have also a low pass filter on the top here. So that's gonna say, okay, if I click on that, everything that's above where I set my low pass filter is gonna get cut out and all the lower frequencies are gonna pass through. So typically band one, you're gonna use this as a high pass filter. So below that, then we have frequency. So this is frequency range. What frequency in Hertz or kilohertz do you want that band one to be set at? So if I turn it on here, this is band one. Again, like I said, you're generally gonna use this as your high pass filter. And for most vocal tracks, you're gonna to wanna to set this around 100 to say 120 maybe, because any frequency that's gonna be below that is not something you're gonna to wanna to hear or that you're gonna need for a talking head or vocal track. So you can set that around 100. Generally, I just use 100 because it's an easy round number. So you can set this in a few different ways. You can come over here and click and hold and just drag back and forth. You can click on the dial here and hold and drag back and forth to get a little more exact. Or if you just wanna come up into your graphic EQ here, you can grab that point one and drag it back and forth. And that's gonna be able to set wherever you want your frequency to be. Now, moving on to bands two through five, they're going to work in a similar fashion to band one. Again, if you click the name, it's going to turn on the points on or off. So let's just have band two on here. If you look at the icons here, you've got several different options of what your adjustment is going to look like. So I would recommend that you use the bell curve here. That's the one that I use and I find it the most helpful. But you do have other options like this one right here. For example, if I boost it up and bring it up, you can see it has this shape to it. And if I bring it down below and cut, it has that same shape. And if I come to uh, the similar one all the way on the bottom here, it's gonna do the exact same thing just in reverse where it's gonna bring it up to a shelf and bring it down to a shelf if that's what you wanna do. And then you also have an option here that's gonna drop a frequency all the way down to zero. Now you may need to do that, but you may not. But I find and would recommend using the bell curve because I think that works out the best most of the time and you're gonna be able to accomplish what you need to using that. So moving down, next you have frequency. And again, you have your frequency numbers here. And you can either, like I said, with the first one, click and hold on the numbers and move it around. You can click on your uh, dial here and hold and move it around. Or you can just come up, grab that number two point, move it up, move it down, move it wherever you wanna put it. Below that, you've got some preset ranges. So you can just click on those. You got the low range, the middle low, the middle high, and the high range in the frequency band here. So you can just select one of those if you wanted to go right to one of those points. But generally I'm gonna do it uh, manually. I'm not gonna use one of those presets. I'll just drag it around and I'll show you how we're gonna find where we wanna place it in just a few minutes here. So the next thing we have here is gain. And gain is a way that you can either boost or attenuate or reduce a given frequency. For example, my point two here, if I click and hold on my little wheel here, drag it up, you can see it boosts the frequency. And if I click and hold and bring it down, it's gonna cut or attenuate that frequency. And to reset it on any one of these dials, you can just double click and that's gonna bring it back to whatever the default setting is. So let's just boost this up a little bit so you can see what the next tool does here and that is Q factor. So Q factor says, how much of the frequency band do you want me to affect by the change? So if I grab on this little dial here and I crank it up, you can see now we have a very narrow frequency band that we're gonna affect by wherever we put this point. And if I come and drag it all the way down, you're gonna see now it affects a very wide band of frequencies here from say 125 almost to 1K. So depending on what you're trying to do and what you're trying to fix with your sounds, you're gonna need to adjust your Q factor. So I'm just gonna double click that to reset it to the default. And we'll just bring that, you know, we'll just go ahead and hit reset right up here and get us all back to the default settings here. So you're gonna have the same options, like I mentioned, for band two, three, four, and five. So finally, we have band six, and band six is gonna work in a very similar way to band one. 
If we uh, turn it on and we look at our little drop down here, we've got our low pass filter, which is generally what we're going to use for band six here. And again, low pass filter means it's cutting out all of the frequencies that are higher than whatever we set our frequency at. Anything that's below that frequency will pass through and not be affected by our high pass filter. So it looks like when you turn it on, it drops in at 13,100 kilohertz. And you can leave it there to start. That's going to be fine. And generally, you're going to use this high pass filter to get rid of any kind of hissing sounds or any uh, high ear piercing sounds that may be caught up in your clip somehow, but that's going to help take care of that. All right, so that's an overview of how the EQ tab works, what the different things do, and how you can start to make some changes here. So now let's get down to how to practically use the EQ tab. Let's take our clip. We're going to play through it, and I'm going to show you exactly how I would edit the EQ on this clip, and we're going to see what we can come up with. And hopefully at the end of the day, it sounds a little bit better than it does right now. So let's play through it once, hear how it sounds before we start making adjustments. Then we're going to go ahead and make some adjustments to the EQ. All right, so let's play through this once here so we can see how it sounds, and then we'll get to editing some EQ. What's happening, guys? Here is our sample audio clip we're going to be using as we work through the Fairlight tab here. We're going to be doing everything from setting our levels to adding in some effects and hopefully seeing what all the effects here do in the Fairlight tab. So this is the sample clip we're going to be starting with. I'm going to make this available to you guys to use so that you can follow along if you want to. So uh, let's get into editing some audio. All right, so there's our clip without anything. I'm going to put this window back by clicking that guy. So the first thing that I do with every clip is I turn on the high pass filter. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on band one. And as I mentioned, I'm going to roll this on up to about 100. It could be a little more, a little less. It, it doesn't matter too much. Um, but if it sounds like you've got any boominess in your clip, that's going to help take care of that. So let's just play through the clip and see if we can notice a difference with that low pass filter on versus it off. So I'm going to turn it off and I'll turn it on as we're playing through the clip. What's happening, guys? Here is our sample audio clip we're going to be using as we work through the Fairlight tab here. We're going to be doing everything from... And you can hear a little bit of a difference, not much, but I'm going to throw it on there anyway. And a lot of times you're going to have to keep playing through the clip, turn it on and off, and we're going to be playing through the clip while we make adjustments so that we can see what's actually happening to uh, our EQ here and see how it's affecting our clip because that's going to be very important. The next thing I'm going to do is come in and turn on band six because I always want to put on my high pass filter and I'm just going to leave that at the default for right now. Okay, so now we're going to get into playing through our clip and making some adjustments here. So how do I start working with EQ? Well, this is the way that I would recommend doing it. We're going to start with our band two. I'm going to go ahead and change that to the bell shape curve, which is this icon right here. The next thing I want to do is come down to my Q factor and I want to crank that all the way up as high as it'll go. The next thing I want to do, come up and grab your point number two and you want to just bring it all the way up to the top of your uh, EQ here. And what we're going to do is play our clip. We're going to grab this point number two and sweep it back and forth. They call it sweeping the EQ because what we want to do is listen for anything that sounds harsh, sounds really muffled, uh, sounds a little muddy or just doesn't sound so good. And that's going to be where we want to stop because once we find that part that doesn't sound so good, we're going to find that frequency and we're going to reduce it. Maybe not, we're not going to bring it all the way down to minus 20, but you know, say maybe minus 10 or something. We're going to see what we find here in this clip. And this is the first time I'm doing it on this clip. So we're doing it together here and we're going to see what we find. Now this is going to be the same process that I'm going to use for each one of the bands two through five. Now you may not need to use all these, but maybe sometimes you do. So we're going to work on this clip and see what we can find. One thing that is helpful, if I just move this out of the way real quick, is to have our clip loop here so we can hear the differences. So if I come to the beginning of my clip and I want to click on my loop button, which is this guy right here. Once you turn on your loop, the next thing we want to do is select a range of our clip because we don't need the whole timeline playing, you know, back and forth uh, for the whole thing. If you have one clip like this, not a big deal. But if you got a whole timeline, you don't want to listen to all of it. So what we want to do is select a range. In order to do that, click on this icon right here. And now we can come down and select our range of our clip. So let's say I want to come from here. I'm going to click, hold, and drag. We'll bring it back to there. Once we select our range, we can use a keyboard shortcut, option, or alt, and forward slash. And that is going to allow this clip to continue to loop and play over and over again. So what I'm going to do is loop this clip. I'm going to play it, and then we're going to bring up our equalizer here. Let me bring this back up, and I'm going to use this uh, band number two, and we're going to see if we can find anything that does not sound good. And I know that's kind of vague, but I think once we find a spot that doesn't sound good, because pretty much every microphone has a spot or two or several that doesn't sound good, you're going to understand what I'm talking about a little bit more. So let's play through the clip and see what we can find here with our band two and our EQ. 
What's happening guys, here is our sample audio clip we're gonna be using as we work through the Fairlight tab here. We're gonna be doing everything from setting our levels to adding in some effects and hopefully seeing what all the effects here do in the Fairlight tab. So this is the sample clip we're gonna be starting with. I'm gonna make this available to you guys to use so that you can follow along if you want to. So uh, let's get into editing. All right, so right there, it's got a little hollow-ish sound to it. It sounds a little funky. So I'm gonna go right there and I wanna drop it down. Now, once I find that frequency, you can grab your point here and bring it down, but since I might move it a little bit, I'm actually gonna come down to my uh, tools down here and we see we're at frequency 281 Hertz, but I'm gonna just reduce the gain using this knob here because I know that's gonna bring it straight down. So let's go, I don't know, minus 10. I'm gonna play through it again and just adjust this and bring it down a little to see if it makes a difference. What's happening guys, here is our sample audio clip we're gonna be using as we work through the Fairlight tab here. We're gonna be doing everything from setting our levels to adding in some effects and hopefully seeing what all the effects here do in the Fairlight. Okay, so that wasn't too bad of a problem there, so we don't need to drop it out too much. It just had a little bit of a funky sound to it, not too bad, um, so I'm just gonna leave it right here at about minus five for right now. So now I'm gonna move on to the point number three, and basically you wanna kinda of work up your EQ here and a lot of times you're gonna find uh, problems in the say two to 500 range. It's gonna sound a little bit muddy or uh, muffled. You can hear how there was that little, it's not feedback, I don't even know how to describe the sound, but where it kind of sounded a little echoey or like you're talking in a can a little bit. Um, so you're gonna find things like that in that, that maybe 200 to 500 range. So you might wanna cut some frequencies in there. And generally you always wanna cut before you boost anything. I think I said that already but you always wanna cut before you start boosting anything because we wanna get rid of everything that does not sound good. So now I'm gonna move on to point number three. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna boost up my Q factor and I'm just gonna bring the gain all the way up. I'm gonna play through and see what we hear. So we may find something in this 500 to 1000 range. We'll see how that works out. Um, but we're probably definitely gonna find something in that one to two kilohertz range because that is generally where most voices will lie as far as the bulk of the frequencies and generally you're gonna get some kind of uh, weird sound in there that if you reduce it a little bit, I think it just helps the overall sound of your microphone, your voice, or whoever's voice you're working on sound a little bit better. So now let's loop through this clip and work with uh, our third band here and see how that sounds. What's happening guys, here is our sample audio clip we're gonna be using as we work through the Fairlight tab here. We're gonna be doing everything from setting our levels to adding in some so there's effects the spot right and there. hopefully seeing what all the effects here do in the Fairlight tab. So this is the sample clip we're gonna be starting with. I'm gonna make this available to you guys to use so that you can follow along if you want to. So uh, let's- All right, so right there, it does have another little sound to it, almost like it's, uh, I don't know, echoey or, or there's something going on there that I don't like. So I'm gonna leave this right here. I'm gonna play through it again and just drop this frequency down. Let's see if you guys can hear it and then I'll lower it down as we're listening. What's happening guys, here is our sample audio clip we're gonna be using as we work through the Fairlight tab here. We're gonna be doing everything from- All right, so I think that's pretty good. And if we wanted to get it before or after, see how we're working out, you would just turn off your EQ. I'm gonna play through and turn it on. We can see if we hear a difference here. What's happening guys, here is our sample audio clip we're gonna be using as we work through the Fairlight tab. All right, so I think that's making a difference. I mean, it sounds like it tightens it up a little bit. Um, again, a lot of these things that you do with audio are very uh, small changes. They're little nuanced things that, uh, you know, over a bunch of different changes that you're going to make are going to make a big difference um, and just help cleaning up your audio, making your voice sound crisp and clear. But it's a little tedious and you really got to develop an ear for it. You know, it took me a long time to hear the different kinds of sounds, even though sometimes they're hard to describe. It took me a long time uh, mixing live sound to be able to hear these things. So it's very nuanced kind of stuff. Most of the time, you're not going to hear huge changes. But the next item that we're going to take a look at here with band number four right in this 2000 kilohertz range was very noticeable, I thought anyway. So hopefully you guys can hear it too. So let's grab number four. Again, I'm gonna boost up my Q factor and we're gonna raise this up and see what we hear. What's happening guys, here is our sample audio clip we're gonna be using as we work through the Fairlight tab here. We're gonna be doing everything from setting our levels to adding in some effects and hopefully seeing what all the effects here do in the Fairlight tab. So this is the sample clip we're gonna be starting with. I'm gonna make this available to you guys to use so that you can follow along if you want to. So uh, let's get... Okay, so there, I, I, hopefully you guys could hear that on your end there, but uh, right up here, that just, it just had a like almost a whistle to it. Did not sound good at all, so I dropped that out. So let's say you go ahead and make a couple changes here and maybe, you know, the voice is still not quite, quite as clear as you want it to be. You can come and grab this band five and if you uh, switch over to, again, the bell curve here, and you drop down that Q factor a little bit, 
If you boost your frequencies just a touch in that, say, four, five, six kilohertz range, um, maybe even as low as the three uh, kilohertz range, it's going to help with some clarity and, and sibilance in the voice. It's going to help make it just sound a little bit clearer. And uh, let's just play through and see if it makes a difference on this clip. So let's try it out. What's happening, guys? Here is our sample audio clip we're going to be using as we work through the Fairlight tab here. We're going to be doing everything from setting our levels to adding in some effects and hopefully seeing what all the effects here do in the Fairlight. So it does add just a little bit of clarity there, and uh, I, I think that helps. So let's try now with the changes that we have now as it is, play through it without the EQ, and then turn it on and see how that sounds. What's happening, guys? Here is our sample audio clip we're going to be using as we work through the Fairlight tab here. We're going to be doing everything from setting our levels to adding in some effects and hopefully seeing what all the effects here do in the Fairlight tab. So this is the sample clip we're going to be starting with. I'm going to make this available to you guys to use so that you can follow along if you want to. So it sounds a little bit hollow to me. It sounds like you use a little more low end. So I might grab this uh, band number two and bring it back up and actually open up the cue a little bit, bring it back up so that I'm not cutting as much. And let's just see how that sounds. What's happening, guys? Here is our sample audio clip we're going to be using as we work through the Fairlight tab here. We're going to be doing everything from setting our levels to adding in some effect. So I think that's pretty good. One thing I do notice is that there's still a kind of, uh, I don't know if there's the wind outside, a little hiss in the background there. So I think what I want to try is bringing down my band six just a little bit, maybe around, I don't know, 11.4. Let's try that and see how that sounds. So I want to try just something here. I want to select just the very end of my clip where I could hear the uh, kind of wind going a little bit. And I just want to loop that so I can hear what kind of change I'm making with our band six with our low pass filter. So I'm going to loop that. So it's not making as much of a difference as I thought it might but uh, maybe that's something we need to use a little noise reduction on. And a lot of this stuff is just trial and error, kind of see what works, what sounds good to you. And keep in mind that uh, we're trying to get rid of anything that does not sound good here with the EQ. In videos to come, we're gonna be talking a little bit more about compression and multiband compressors, which really continue to help sculpt that sound and uh, just make it sound better overall for talking head and vocal stuff, specifically the track that we're working on now. All right, so I think that's good enough for now. Um, it definitely made some good changes there. Like I said, they're very small and nuanced kind of things, but it's going to make a difference at the end of the day for you. Now, if you found that your uh, EQ work made the volume or the levels of your clip a little bit lower than you want, you can go ahead and grab this gain and boost things up a little bit. And that's going to help uh, regain some of the signal you may have lost by making some EQ adjustments. I'm going to go ahead and leave mine at zero for now, and uh, we'll see how that works out as we move on forward here. All right, so there's the basics of working with EQ. Now, I've got a few more tips for you on how to fix sounds that you might notice in your clip that don't sound good. So that band one, anything that falls below 100 hertz, you kind of want to get rid of. You don't need that in a vocal track or talking head track. Now, if you're editing some bass, yeah, you definitely want to keep that in there because that's where all of your bass frequencies live in that uh, below 100 hertz range. But for vocals and talking head stuff, you don't need anything down there. It's just going to contribute to your clip sounding muddy or you might have some... Uh, low uh, noise in there that you just don't want. So go ahead and put on a high pass filter and take out everything below 100 hertz. Now let's say you've got a little boominess going on in your clip. Maybe it sounds a little bit muddy. Well, you wanna look in that 100 to 350 hertz range. So that's gonna be where you get some of that boominess and muddiness sounding. So take a look there, raise up uh, one of your bands, see if you can find that bad spot and then reduce or cut that frequency. And if you continue to hear like a boxy sound or maybe it's a little bit muffled, Try looking in that five to 600 hertz range up to a thousand. So say 500 to a thousand, somewhere in that range. If you keep hearing stuff that sounds a little boxy or muffled, because you may have different spots in the EQ where you're getting a muffled sound or something that just kind of clogs up your audio a little bit and makes it not sound so good. So again, boost up your band, look for that frequency and then reduce that particular frequency. And that's going to help get rid of that boxiness or boominess sound. Then moving up from 1,000 to say 4,500 hertz or so is where your vocals are generally going to fall. And most of the time, it's actually around that one to 2,000 kilohertz range. So take a look in there if you're hearing things that um, are just not sounding good. They even describe them as uh, a little nasally. You know, you got a little stuffy nose. You want to take care of that. You can find that in, in that one to 4,000 kilohertz range. Um, you can also look for anything that sounds a little honky. I like that description. I don't know why they call it honky, but that's what they do. 
So anything that sounds a little honky or doesn't sound so good, you can try and find that and bring it down a little bit or anything that just sounds harsh. And that's kind of what we found here um, as we were looking at our clip around that 2000 kilohertz range. We found just a harsh sound that just didn't sound good and that's what we dropped down. So look in that range and that's where you're gonna definitely hear a difference most of the time for uh, any of your vocals. And again, it's gonna be different for every single microphone, for every single recording situation. It's always gonna be different. Now, if you're in a situation like this, I got my studio, I use the same microphone, it's gonna be great to save an EQ preset so that way, you know, pretty much I can always use the same thing. But you're always gonna have to test it out and see how it sounds with a new microphone or a different setup. You may need to make different changes, so keep that in mind. Let's say you've gone through and made a couple changes there, but the voice still just doesn't sound that clear. You wanna make it a little bit clearer and a little bit easier to understand. Well, you might wanna try boosting just a little bit in that five to 7,000 kilohertz range. And when I say boost it just a little, I mean like, seriously, like just a little bit. You don't wanna boost it a lot because it's real easy to go too heavy handed with any of these EQ adjustments, whether you're cutting or boosting, but just a little bit, a little bit on the boost and that's gonna help with the clarity of your voice. So five to 7,000 kilohertz, check that out. And that, that should help with the clarity. The next range you have is that eight to 10,000. And generally for this kind of stuff, like I don't touch anything in there, but where I do boost that EQ in that eight to 10,000 range a little bit is in live music, especially with women's voices who have that upper uh, register voice and vocals, you wanna boost it and it's gonna give a little presence and uh, sibilance to the voice and just kind of give it a little bit of sparkle almost and just really uh, take it up a level and just make it sound like really great actually. I mean, it, it does a great job. I use it all the time for that purpose. In these talking head kind of stuff, don't really have a need for it, but hey, if you're still having troubles, try boosting up something just a little bit, again, a little bit, and see if that helps for you. And the last range is that 15 to uh, 20,000 range. It can add just a little bit of sparkle. I mean, just a touch of sparkle uh, to a vocal track, especially for a singer. Again, in these kind of videos in this setup, not I wouldn't recommend that. I would use a, a low pass filter as opposed to boosting anything, but for singers and, and vocals in music, you may want to just get a, a little bit of like uh, that that airy presence sound. It's kind of hard to describe, but when you hear it, uh, you'll know it. So that's what you'd want to do in that upper range. But like I said, most of the time for this kind of stuff, I'm going to go ahead and throw on a low pass filter and get rid of any of those high like hissing sounds or anything that uh, I might not want in that upper range of the EQ. So that's it. If you missed the first video about setting levels, which you should do before you get here, check out this video. And if you want to check out another video, YouTube's going to pick one for you down there. So you can go check that one out. So if you like these, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Next time we're getting into dynamics and how to use the dynamics panel. So stay tuned and I will see you in the next video. Peace.